That's the new meme. It's the donk bottle. I'm sad. I wonder what else I can use this uh, trident on. I want to find a sharky and use it. Let's see if I can abuse my power. The shark is not paying you much notice. You would. Oh, fine. All right, let's try it. Oh, oh, oh! I tra I transmogrified him into a this, fish. This, the power of the trident has turned the sharky sentry into a harmless. Neat. I'm gonna do it to all of them. I am going to wipe out this entire civilization. Hi there. <laughs> Where are those centuries that used to piss me off? <laughs> oh, King Neptune, what have you done? Oh, they're not there anymore. <laughs> I think I scared them off. Oh, King Neptune, you what mistakes you've made. You have just led to the genocide of an entire underwater civilization. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear dog okay I think we're done here <laughs> why is the word dog so funny all of a sudden okay let's see if we can get out of here the trident guides you back to Neptune's realm oh, the trident does everything Let's use the trident on the, on the king. See what happens. Maybe I'll turn him into a shark. You approach the king. He smiles and graciously accepts his trident from you. Then he calls everyone to attention. To commemorate the return of my trident and to honor King Graham's success, I hereby call for a celebration. Guess what? You're marrying my daughter. The celebration lasts for some time. You eat, drink, and have a merry time with many of the mer people. After a few hours, the festivities wind down, and you finally have a chance to speak with Neptune. Alone. We are donking hardcore. The gems of nature represent the three stages of life. Water gives birth to life. Oh, this must be after this I have given you is the first of three. Second is the growth gem, or air gem, for air sustains life and permits it to grow. Uh, How might I find the growth gem? I know only that its location Every is as I'm far above the surface of the land as we are below it. Beyond <laughs> the land, <beer. laughs> I cannot eat you. Look at the pecs on that simmer and crosses Neptune's face momentarily. You might say that Air is not exactly my element. You decide that the beverages consumed were to blame for that one. How do the how do the underwater and people drink it? Your Majesty, this is small. the death gem, the completion of life and the natural order of things. The oar of destiny <laughs> understands this now, as did the ancients who imprisoned the soul within. As for that gem's location. I had hoped you would have no business venturing to well, He's got the dog and dog dog. Kalima was once ruled from that place. But sadly, her people have not seen their lord for quite some time. How long a time? Who? Oh. Oh. A good four, maybe five decades. Decades? Surely then. If you please, I would prefer not to dwell upon this subject. Because I you have done me me. a great service this day, and I thank you. Good luck, King Graham, and good speed. <laughs> okay, can I at least borrow your horse to get to back to the ocean's edge? God damn it. This crown. You depart the underwater kingdom and head back towards the surface. What an incredible experience. You are certain you will never forget the adventure you just had. Additionally, you have acquired one of the gems. Making you forget As the you adventure you just had. You realize that the magic which allowed you to breathe underwater has now subsided. Nice. 
All right. We have the gem. Da 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 da. MacGuffin, get. Save. Whoops, I misspelled MacGuffin. Oh well. Wouldn't be a poll, let's play if I didn't misspell something every 20 minutes. Uh, oh wait, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry. You are not the door of destiny. Oh. All right. Well, next time Jason tells anybody to put gem in mouth, that's the retort that we are not the door of destiny. Put gem in mouth. What do I look like? The door of fucking destiny over here? Hey. It's my best Lord Cat impression. Hey. Whoa, wait, what? 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 What are you going to do? Buttons. Okay. Um... Should we try and go put this into the door, or... Nah, let's go see if this is, um... If this is the, done the... the oh God, can't talk. Let's see if the passage of time has done its passage of time thing. Whatever. Okay. Put the gem in the skull? No! I'm not wasting my gem in that. Nonsense. Let's go see if the shop is open yet, after we did all that. Yay, it is! Ooh, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Ah, dragon fire! Oh, no, wait. It's just a mounted dragon head. Whew. Hmm. Apparently these guys did not like dragon fire very much. A large and incredibly hefty-looking mallet is propped up against the shelf. A small engraving on its head reads, Broggy. First person to, to uh, tell me where that name comes from. Get an internet cookie. Go. I'm waiting. First person, come on. Who knows that name? It's another Sierra game. Oh, oh! Alright, all right, Mateo, you're close. Come on, more, uh, more, more details. A large and incredibly hefty looking mallet is propped up against the shelf. A small engraving on its head reads... No, 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 no. Come on. Quest for Glory is correct. Which one? No, sorry, Roses. You're on. There you go. And I'm sure it was just a, uh, a uh, process of elimination. Broggy was a, a giant blue troll type person, and you had to fill his giant hands with apples in order to proceed, and he gave you a glowing gem of the north. You are inside it. Let's see what else is in here. Apparently, this interesting looking item is a model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Quite a useful little device in another time. And I'm place. not sure what a model DX cartridge unit is. I'm sure that's a cute joke somewhere. It is a red sorcerer's hat. Okay, let's see what other references to other games there. It is a tiny harp. How cute. Obviously, the Swiss haven't quite got the idea yet. Okay. You are in some. Obviously. Uh, let's see. What's over here? There are some vases. Vases. Some old shields. Shields. There's a skull. You are inside. Oh. Oh, I can't really look at much it else. It is a crystal ball. Fairly standard equipment for those of the magical persuasion. Hey, what was a what was a Kingdom Hearts Seven reference? There are some. I missed that one. It's a weather vane with the obligatory depiction of a rooster. An expensive-looking statue catches your eye. It is sculpted of white marble and appears to be the only item of any real value within the shop. You find it quite odd that this grand statue is situated amongst other ordinary items of far less value. Indeed. Uh, please do not touch that. It is extremely valuable. And I am sitting so far from my cheap microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to nitpick. I'm sorry. I'll be all right. Good afternoon. What can I do for you, dear? Hello. Do you sell anything that would aid in ascent of a mountain? Unfortunately, I do not sell climbing equipment or anything of that sort. This is really a specialist store. Oh. However, I do have an item which you might find useful. This lamp. This lamp. It's said to contain a genie. Ooh. Never tried it myself, of course. I do not believe in using magic to solve my problems. Nature has made us as we are, and we should be glad of that. Hippie. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. yeah, whatever. Lamp. The old lady <laughs> hesitates. 
You sense she wants more from you than your money. Oh, you know, oh, oh, not anything oh, that you will regret. Oh, oh. Well, this could be considered my bachelor party. You are a man who seems adept at taking care of himself. Perhaps you could do a small favor for me? Somehow, you knew she was going to say that. I once owned a beautiful nightingale. Quite rare around here. Sing but the sweet nightingale. That foul old witch Hagatha has my stolen it from me. Probably to use in some concoction or another. Her nose screws up in disgust. Ew, can your so nose do that? So, if you could be a sweetie and retrieve it from me, I will trade you. The lamp for the bird. Agreed? Well, I will see what I can do. Do be careful. If Agatha should spot you out of her good eye, then you'll be in for it. Okay. Mental note. So now we have to go. We actually have a reason to go to Agatha's cave now. A rather beaten and tarnished brass lamp is positioned on the countertop. You screw up and disgust at me, and I will donk you good. Okay. Well, let's see what we can accomplish at Haggadah's cave. Uh, let's see. I think her cave was this way. Yes. Man, I love this old skipping stuff. Yay. All right. Um, you know, I think your idea of using this gem in the skull is actually a good one, and maybe I can get it back later. This skull already has a glowing blue gem. Let's give it to this one, then. As you attempt to place the birth gem into the skull, you discover that it does not fit properly. Instead, it juts out uselessly like a bulging eyeball. Huh, okay. Oh, wait, it's, it's, it's in there. Let's give it a good whack. You gently tap the birth gem with the mallet, hoping not to break it. It budges only slightly. You give it a harder hit. It moves a bit more. You hold your breath and give the gem an almighty thwack. It pops into the skull. Boosh! What does that accomplish? And that's still glowing. Uh... The birth gem is now fully inside this skull's eye socket. Well, what is what did that do? Can I go inside now? Nope. <laughs> you saw black. Okay, okay. Uh. You have no reason to sh don't smash the skull, Graham. Um. Yeah, maybe we can put, like, the earrings and stuff on it, make it feel pretty. Okay. Um, hmm. What to do with it? As you oh. face the skull towards the image of the bat above the cave, you notice that its wing has faded slightly. However, you suspect that whatever danger the bat represents is still in effect. Oh, all righty. Zip-a. You turn the rightmost skull so that it faces the bat symbol above the cave entrance. The power of the two skulls combined has caused the bat symbol to disappear. You sense whatever danger it represented has now subsided. All right, fine. Props, roses. All right, in we go. Oh. As you enter, you are almost overwhelmed by the foul stench which molests your nostrils. It is obviously coming from whatever Hagatha is cooking in that large cauldron Can of you hers. Smell what there are some things is? of interest on the other side of the cave, but you have no means of crossing over there safely at this time. A caged nightingale sits on the floor near the northern cave wall. The light from outside barely penetrates the interior of this cave. So long as you keep your distance, Hagatha shouldn't notice you. Okay, so we have to be careful. It is a crystal ball. Fair. Unfortunately, you... Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Hey, you are the gentleman. Saving me a lot of trouble by coming here. 
You wandered into the witch's lair, and where you stood gave not a care. She soon saw you, a smile she gave. Your flesh, your blood, your bones she craved. Okay, well, no problem. No problem. Everything's fine. We're right here. As you. Okay, let's do this. You. The. Okay, so we're not. Apparently, we now know what her good eye is, so we'll go around the other way. A simple but elegant black cloak hangs on a stand. You need to get... Being as quiet as a mouse, you slide your hand inside the cloak to discover a deep pocket. Amongst sticky and disgusting spell ingredients, you find a tiny silver key and a peculiar golden ring-shaped device. Neat. Uh, can I get that far over to that nightingale cage without her seeing me? The fluid of blood was You silently drop the cloth over the cage. Okay, I see it's attached to the wall, so that's, that's probably what the little key is for. We take a little key. Twill make my complexion. You slide the silver key fresh. into the lock. It fits. You turn it silently, and the chain falls to the ground. Without making a sound, you take the nightingale into your possession. In my pants. Inducing time to reverse it. Nice. You cannot remove the birth gem while the blue light is streaming from... Ha. Ah, now, finally, I get to do what I've always wanted to do. Smushish. You strike the skull with all your strength, and it shatters easily. The birth gem clatters to the ground, along with a multitude of bone fragments. Ah, uh, Dr. Good. You reacquire... I'm going to break the other one, too. I'm going to grab whatever's in there. You have no... Yeah, and I do. I want the other gem. Flargan, flargan, flargan. Well, I'm not getting in there anymore. Um, okay, so now we head back to town. We'll give her the nightingale. Now, the, uh, the shopkeeper with the nightingale, of course, is actually still remaining from the original King's Quest 2. But I believe they also expand even upon her character and make her a fully fleshed out type of person with it, her own little plot lines and stuff. Through the I already dunked my game. But I'll dunk my game again. Okay. The cage still has a cloth draped over it. You remove the cloth from the cage. Looking at the bottom of the cage, Ooh. you find that a letter has become stuck to it. You peel it off. You poke the bird. It responds by pecking your finger. Dog! Okay. The paper is slightly crumpled and dirty, having somehow become stuck to the bottom of a bird cage. You read the letter. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. It's signed by M, which could be Mananan or Mordak, perhaps. So, my dear sister, it has been a while since my last letter to you, and quite an age since we last spoke. Since such are the busy lives we need, I know of your preoccupation with eliminating your competition and wish you well in that ongoing endeavor. Yes, for my part, the servant I have owned for the last 17 years... Ooh, it is Mananan. It's Mananan. He's talking about Gwydion. It would almost be a shame to kill this one, for he is quite adept at his chores. But the tradition must be observed at all times. I shall require a replacement in the not-too-distant future. Perhaps I should think up a new, replace, uh, new name for my next slave, though it... It is much easier when I only need to remember one. I've asked the father to notify me at once. Should he hear of any elected candidates, uh, speaking of which, uh, though it is in no way my place to question the will of the father, for sure he has the best interest of all his followers at heart, does he not spend too much time locating an item of which legend which he has been seeking for almost a millennium? While he has not second-guessed, uh, I do wonder... 
is, is he so assured of his existence that he'll be willing to turn his attention away from his flock for such a long time? As for our remote brother, he seems increasingly interested in the ladies these days. I believe he has his eye on a royal couple who are expected to conceive a girl within the year, so the signs say. I must confess, if he's prepared to wait as many, so many long years for the child's maturation before abducting her, then he has far more patience than I. I await your reply, dear sister, and hope that this letter finds you well. If you have the chance to speak to the father, perhaps you would inquire of his commitment to this item that he seeks. I would advise the utmost discretion, naturally. You are loyal and by far better sibling, M. Cool. Letter written by Bananan himself. This you. Would you put it away and continue your quest? Now, was that letter addressed to Hagatha? Or to her? Since it was her cage. Let's find out, shall we? Um, let's not confront her on this. Should we? Let's give her the cage first. You offer the nightingale to Angelina. The sheer elation on her face almost makes the whole risk worth the while. She snatches it from you and proceeds to fuss over the bird. You wait for a moment, but it seems she no longer notices you. <coughs> If you don't mind about the lamp you promised me and trade for the nightingale? Oh, the shopkeeper looks up at you vaguely. She gradually remembers that there is another being in her world. Yes? Oh, yes, take it. You'll have no beginning of use with it. Don't you mean no end of use? Of course. Whatever you say, dear. You hear Angelina muttering cheerfully to herself as she exits. Finally, I have the final ingredient for that marvelous youth potion. I'm going to beat you to the punch, my dear Agatha. Serves you right for hoarding this sweet, juicy thing to yourself. She's going to eat it. You feel a nauseous tinge in your stomach. Well, at least the lamp is now yours. Okay. You take the old lamp. Um, let's see. Well, let's save. Don't. Let's rub it. You rub the lamp and wait expectantly, but nothing happens. You're about to give it another try when a small puff of smoke appears at the end of the spout. It clears. Now you will spend another 50,000 years in a bottle. A note? As you remove it, the lamp disappears. You read the scroll. To the unlucky fool who bought this lamp, as you may have gathered, this lamp no longer contains a fabulous genie, as my former master, friend of Manus Greatest, has released me with his final wish. However, as a consolation, please be advised of the following. The shopkeeper is not to be trusted. She dabbles in the back arts and keeps a rather distasteful company. May these words reveal what lies beneath, and your findings lead you to a higher position in life. So hard like a stone, and white like the snow, stand silent the man who guards what's below. May you forever know the beauty of freedom, signed Firebird, here translated as Nibor Samuel. There we go. Happy Roses. Roses are my favorite! Oh no! Okay, so we have a, a useless genie lamp. Let's go, let's, let's experiment with this thing. Upon closer examination, you discover that the statue hides a small latch. You flip the latch and watch in amazement as a trap door opens up from the floor. Hey there, Fight Fight! Yay, trap door. Traps always get stuff in trap doors. If you wish to close... No, I, I want to go down. Thank you. You close the trap door behind you. Another letter. You see a... Oh, God, more narration. You read the letter sitting on the desk. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm not doing Hagatha's voice. My throat's already sore from Firebird. Uh, Angelina, once again, and I put you an invitation to join our illustrious community. Unsurprisingly, uh, you have heard of its reputation through other channels. I personally encourage you to give it serious thought. 
We are not only interested in the new membership of the majors of this world, but this invitation goes out to all that believe that when the appointed time comes that the faithful will be rewarded. The time of those poor, unenlightened fools, those poor, unfortunate souls will perish. All that is asked in return is complete allegiance to the Father. He has guided us from the beginning, and his power is far older than most. I know that you are hesitant to do the concerns regarding the dress code, but let me show you that black would look simply charming on you, dear. My gratitude goes out to you for the flattering assertion that I would make a fine ruler of Kalimo. What a shame that the former ruler is still has lost all interest in the homeland. I cannot blame him, however. The change is trying quite hard. To answer your earlier question, yes, I have inquired a nightingale. They are most uncommon in this region, and yes, I am quite sure that it is the final ingredient to able required to recreate re- 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 complete my youth potion. As much as I would like to share it with you, I'm afraid that a single nightingale will provide only enough solution of one person. In any event, I shall, of course, pay you a visit in the moment the youth potion takes effect. H. All right, that's pretty obvious. Look at all this stuff. You see a colorful rolled up carpet. As you pick up the carpet, you notice a small label which reads, Property of Al Din. There might be a faded letter or two in there, but you cannot be sure. Marshes, they're tiny little views. From the back room, you discern Angelina's voice. I did it! I did it! The youth potion is finally finished. All I can do now is drink it. I'm stalling. Angelina, show yourself, you scurvy wretch. Oh, fight uh, words. My dear, what an unexpected sur- Don't you pay the fool with me. I know you stole it. <laughs> stole? Really, I do not know. Silence. For your lies and deceit, there can be only one consequence. There can be only no, one. Please. How can you say I said silence. Oh, and one more thing. Left. Your invitation to join us is revoked. <gasps> no! What is this? Ah, the youth potion at last. Oh, no. Oh, mine now. Now, what was that spell for removing floorboards? Curses. I shall have to go back and look it up. Sucker. I wonder what happens if I drink it. You fish around in the pile of down and successfully retrieve the youth potion. Oh, I feel so bad. There's a dead nightingale in this. Oh. All right, let's try drinking it. Curious as to whether the youth potion lives up to its name, you drink every last drop of the blue liquid. Oh, it's a baby. Planning to start your life over? Unfortunately, your fair maiden won't be around by the time you become interested in women again. Ability. Oh, I played the little music at the end. Da 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 da. Look at all the stuff. A tangled mass of jewelry and chains have been dumped into boxes. Not the music. You have neither the time nor the patience. You much prefer the lightness of your own sword. Oh, come on. The room has a... The room has... The room. You'd better not move anything in this room. You want to talk about Haggath is gone and the Carry lady is dead? Oh, whatever. Fine. I'm out of here. I don't know nothing about breath and no babies. You open the trap door ever so slightly and peer into the room above. Hagatha is nowhere to be seen. You make your exit from the basement. Cool. I guess I should close that. You flick the latch. You have no dis- Oh. Twin axes grace the wall above the front door. You wonder if they serve as a security measure for intruders. All right. Um, well, we have a youth potion now. And oh, what is this thing? This odd circular device intrigues you. It depicts several different symbols around its outer rim. The sun, a mountain range, a drop of water, and a cloud. Hmm. We'll have to remember that one. Uh, oh yeah, now we have the magic carpet, which I guess, like the game, will take us up to the uh, clouds. Let's see if the librarian has anything else to say. Yes? 
Could you recommend another good book? No. There! Daddy? This book is entitled Legends. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. Ah, uh, here we go again. Legends, Damji's first king. Uh, known to many as Legendamor. He is as much an enigma as history has woven into the fabric of the legend himself. Through his passing occurred nearly 1,000 years ago, it remains somewhat unclear to the matter of his death and what became of the power he wielded. Historians do know that Legendamor was a powerful magician, or wizard, as one might say. He might... Oh, might be called nowadays. He, was la he is largely credited with bringing along with his kind... Magic... Wait, he is largely credited with bringing... Oh, with bringing along with his kind... Along with his... his stuff. According to the legend, during what was arguably the bloodiest war Daventry has ever seen, Legion sought to commit his awesome power to the cosmos. It is believed that he blamed himself for the extent of the Grand War, in particular, the magic that has been used to exacerbate the death toll. He therefore chose to render himself mortal, an action would have proved to be his last. However, legend would also suggest that his power may be attainable if only one were to perceive and understand how and when. This is evidenced by a parchment located just a few centuries ago and dated 30 years after the first king's death. Oh, fucking hell. If seeketh you the power of Lingalinar, you shalt be well appraised. It shall not be an easy task from the path that you have swayed. Oh, oh, it rhymes. For in great Daventry lies the mean for which may be found. No, it doesn't rhyme, but it sort of kind of rhymes. Uh, belonging to one who rules the land, but one who wears the crown. From the circle, nature springs from royal thumbs just sown. Through woe betide the unjust thief who claims it for his own. In this great land, tis known to rest the corpse of Lang and Remember Durf Durf, and who died defending his home turf in the longest, fiercest war. His great mistake, though sealed his fate, he cast his magic aside up and high in the heavens, which forever stretches wide. But the search may be rewarding for the seeker of this power, as its apex soon approaches when come with the darkest hour. Hark! By sun and moon and planets, as all of them align, the one prepared for the ascension will surely see the sign. <sighs> Power then can be granted to just one of this great tool, if one can be thee. If one be thee, then shall shalt it be the everlasting jewel. <sighs> what do you think? You like it? No? Alright, fine. Uh, the first king's brother, Mordnyanian, was also presumed killed in Grand War. Like the little lovers, loyal first knight and successor, Grand Lord, everybody in the old times had stupid names, ruled over the realm. For nearly 50 years, he sired a number of children who either remained to, uh, to guarantee the continuation of the royal bloodline or set forth to build kingdoms of their own. Oh, thank God. Okay. What do we learn? Uh, don't want to read any more walls of text. So, I'm not sure exactly what that was supposed to teach us. Can I cure this guy yet of anything? I feel so bad. Let's ride this carpet. After we save. You can't use that there. Oh, oh here we go. You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet begins to rise skyward. We like an auctioneer next. All right, done. As you ascend higher, you realize that the carpet is beyond your control. It glides through the air on a seemingly predetermined course. And off we go. Oh, nice. Let's go right in my hands. All right, where are we now? So the gem should be up here. So oh, hey, look who it is! It's a buddy, the snake. All right, um, let's see. Uh, we don't have a bridle. Can we talk to it? The snake only communicates in hisses. Hisses. All right, I don't want to kill it. Um. The snake does not... Let's just use whatever illogical crap I have. Oh, look at that. You dangle the shimmering opal in front of the snake. 
it soon falls hypnotized in typical snake fashion. Neat. So this is like King's Quest 4. Later. <laughs> uh, ooh, wait a minute. I think there is a, uh, a, a Easter egg here. You reach into the cavity and feel around. What is this? You've discovered a button hidden inside the rock. You press it and wait to see what happens next. Blum, blum, blum. Well, look who it is. In an instant, a man stands beside you. He appears to be somewhat of an adventurer, much like yourself. Greetings. I am King Graham of Daventry. The newcomer nods in greeting. Without a word, he respectfully appraises you. You notice about him the manner of one who has only recently learnt the meaning of that heroism. That is indeed Rico from Quest for Glory, glory 2, too, which we will the play The man opens his mouth to answer, but then pauses to consider that question. Evidently deciding that irrelevant exposition would serve neither party, he casually gestures to the hole in the rock behind you. Might I inquire something of your identity? After a brief search of his own person, a man pulls out a scroll card and hands it to you. You unroll it, and it reads... Having fulfilled the requirements in accordance with the statutes of the famous Adventurer's Correspondence School, the bearer is a qualified would-be hero. The man also shows you a medallion. Upon it are the words, Hero of Spielberg. You reverently return the scroll to the man. You don't say much, do you? With a sigh of resignation, the man shakes his head silently. Surely you might speak to me of your adventures. The man becomes quite enthused about the prospect of relating his most recent adventure to you. Just as he is about to speak, however... Oh. You notice something on the ground that the man must have dropped. You retrieve the paper. It appears to be a scroll. Upon it is some writing. Disclaimer, you have just witnessed a rather shameless plug for the remake of Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire by the entities of ADD Interactive. Available now. As you read the writing, the words are ingrained in your mind. The scroll disappears. I love it. There's nothing under the log, so don't bother moving it. Oh, it's just giving up on the whole log pretense uh, just completely. All right, cave. Ooh, this is new. This long staff looks magical in nature. Grab that. Enchanter's staffs are very powerful objects. You dare not touch this one for fear of the consequences you may bring upon yourself. Okay. Uh, what else can I play with? There's a book here. An ancient book lies open on the workbench. Though its pages are torn and faded, the cover is still a bright blood red. Right. You flip through the book entitled Ye Old Book of Enchantments, Causes, and Cures. The first half contains a list of enchantments. These do not interest you, as you have no desire to inflict inconvenience upon others. However, the cures section does capture your curiosity. While browsing, you spy a promising paragraph. Oh. Ye only book of enchantments, causes, and cures. While casting enchantments upon others may provide you with many daily hours of fun, do not ignore the danger of the mass cast spell when I have upon your own person. For this reason, you should prepare a satellite on which you can protect yourself against the effects of an enchantment, as well as providing means for reversing said spell, should it be deemed necessary. Over the power of the ammo can dispel an enchantment and thus create stuff that's up to the day. I screwed that up. Firstly, heat a blue mineral, a yellow vegetable, a plant of sexual alternative, and, and uh, together until they grind into a greenish liquid. Stir the mixture with a white feather, drop this into a perfectly clear crystal, and recite. <gasps> heat out these words. Crystal perfect. Green is a hue. We still are correct. God will, I fall. Perfect. You will now have the means to safeguard yourself, Dr. Girlfriend. Should your enchantment ever get out of hand, we still are that is which under the effect of enchantment simply allow a strong light to pass through your emerald. At the subject, behold the restoration. Do I hear a data? Cool. Alright, so what, what do I need? I need an emerald. Uh, let's see. Uh, a blue mineral, which I, I, I might have. A yellow vegetable or plant of some sort. I have a, uh, the yellow flower. Uh, Calagulagulagulagulate. I have a white feather. Perfectly, uh, perfectly clear crystal. Um, okay, do I have any of these things? 
Um, the clear crystal, I believe I can get out of my sword. You managed to dislodge the crystal that had been sent within the hilt of the sword almost a millennium ago. You feel a tinge of guilt and wonder what all the past monarchs of Daventry would say if they saw you damaging ancient crown property. Whatever. I'm the crown now. Nothing. Okay. Um, do I have anything to mix this thing in? As you had been expecting, this is your average, ordinary, run-of-the-mill cave. You are naturally surprised to see it is fully decorated and very well furnished. As you had a number of candles and dimly lit hanging lanterns adorn this small cave. They do not aid your vision much. Fortunately, enough sunlight enters from outside the cave. It um, I don't really see like any workspace. A collection of books are stacked side by blah, blah, blah. A neatly displayed scroll hangs. Some incredibly valuable furniture has been placed here. There must be some, like a workspace where I can use these things. Is there anything under the rug? You run your hand over the fabric. No. Hmm. Um. Let me see. Does it say like you what I no. what I needed to miscast kind of spell? Blah blah blah. The power of the emerald. All right. I don't have an emerald though. Or do do it? No. No, I don't. Uh, heat a blue mineral. Vegetable. What do I heat these things over? Is there like a cauldron or something somewhere I can use? Hmm. Some incredibly. Some writing on the wall. Oh, you're right, there is. You notice that some right. You read the inscription. Oh, I create the emerald, I see. Uh, in a row of stones, the number six. Half and a pair from the left do. Pick, quell, then my... S oh, quell, then my spell, avoid the tricks. And a row of stones... Okay, I know what stones they're talking about. Half and a pair from the left. I guess that means... Does that mean five from the left, I guess? I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, half, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. Uh, quell, from the left, do pick, quell, then my spell, avoid the the um, engraving on the oh. wall reads, <laughs> In row of stones that number six, half and a pair. Yeah, yeah, we read it already. Okay, well, I just, we just need something to mix these things in, I suppose, but I really don't have, like, a container of any sort of description. Hmm. Whoa! You have just discovered uh, the gravity of your situation. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's not a path up there. That apparently that's... Oh, son of a bitch. Don't worry, we didn't do much, really. <laughs> you dangle the shimmery. Everything's fine. Alright, I do... Just because I'm not sure if it gave me points or not. You reach into the cavity and... Alright, so I have 75 points. You know... You... As you... Oh, okay, no, it wasn't worth any points. We go, my brother. We go in the man. You flip the... Okay, blah blah blah. We read that. You can. You notice. You read. Okay, you read that. Um, we can't take the staff. Is there anything in this chest? You have better things to do. No. There is nothing. You. Are... Oh, 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 here we go. I can. Alright, um, do we have anything to start a fire with? Is that, is that flint? When lit, this device heats the beaker and any contents that it contains. A wick leads into the base, which is made of flint stone. Okay. Okay, let's try and light this thing. There's nothing inside the beaker. Okay, uh, let's put the stone in there first. Right, first, the flower. We you know that goes in the there. the sickly yellow flower. Aw. Uh, a blue stone, I don't mind losing. Let's try the brooch, you maybe. You toss the brooch into the beaker. Okay. Can we heat that up? 
You strike the blade of your sword against the flint stone. It sparks, and the wick catches a light. You and then you're ready for surgery. As the three unlikely objects melt under the heat of the magical flame. Alrighty. Um. Now what do I do? I forgot. The f um. Let's see. Uh, stir with a white feather. Drop in the crystal, and then I say the magic words. Okay. Feather. You stir the mixture carefully with a white feather. It soon dissolves in the hot liquid. Okay. And get the crystal. Oh, I gotta get back out again. You nothing. You drop the crystal in and watch, amazed, as the green liquid slowly seeps into it. Heed now these words. Crystal. Perfect. Green is Future. Perfect. perfect. Restore. Correct. Guard well my form. Preserve. Protect. You recite the words correctly, line for yeah, line. Yeah, I got a, I got a sure slice enough, of kiwi out of it. Only a brilliant emerald it looks delicious. The glass beaker. You quickly blow the flame out so as not to overheat the emerald and cause damage to it. Picking it up gingerly, you're amazed that the emerald took virtually no time at all to cool. All right, hopefully roses will come back soon because this is this is one of my favorite parts. I actually have a lot of favorite parts. All right, saving. All right. Now, this is what I like mostly about it because the first game pissed me off because the snake puzzle was ridiculous. But now... As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Hey. Behold now stands a magnificent winged horse. Thank you for being here. A horrid enchanter transformed me into that legless thing after I refused to be his steed. Hello, Mr. Horsey. Can we talk? That was quite a gamble, to refuse an enchanter. True. His name is Sugar I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. For I, I am a slightly more higher pitched and Sean Connery. No land dweller. Disciple of the cloud? What does that mean? First, tell me of what you seek up here. You take a, a deep horse. breath, then explain about the door of destiny, the gems of nature, and your present quest to locate the growth gem. So you seek so the air you seek gem. Your air gem. Yes, that is here right. on the rock. You know of it? Most certainly. But you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. Well, thanks anyway. I Bye. I'll gladly take you to it. But alas, the enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the cloud spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. All right, let's try. There's, let's, let's see if we can get a donk out of him. Your head would function much better in its current configuration. Oh, darn. Let's see what else he has to say. What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you seek. It passes through us. But on the reason, yes, we are, we are saving everything and everything we're being so, so you can get some safe if you need to. You will know soon enough when I take you to it. Okay, let's go looking for a bridle. Bridle, bridle, bridle. Okay, if I were a bridal, where would I be? There is not. You have enchant. You have. Hmm. You have. N you never. There is not. You run your hand over the fabrics. Hmm. Maybe if I go look at those rocks they were hinting at. I wonder if I can take off from here. There's not enough. No, fine. Excuse me, Horsey. Where's this put on weight? Oh. You and all the 
magic carpet lay on. The carpet begins to descend. Okay, um, completely forgot where these rocks were, but we'll find them. Okay, no rocks there. No. You have come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, no. Just lemons. Lemons are not rocks. There's Grandma's house. It's not there. There's a pond. Whose puzzle we've solved. Aha! Here we go. Alright. Saving. So it's fifth from the left. One, two, three, four, five. You have run into an evil enchanter. He senses the power of your emerald and quickly departs. Damn right! Who's your daddy now, bitch? You try to lift the stone, but it will not budge. It's fifth on the left, right? It said I couldn't take the enchanter's staff. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Am I missing something? Uh. You try. Maybe I use the uh, dispelling emerald on it. Yeah. You bend over and hold the emerald above the stone so that the sun's light channels through it. Yay! Incredible. The rock has transformed into a silver studded bridle. Badass. You take the bridle. Hooray! He sure went through a lot of trouble to hide this stupid thing. Alright, let's see if I can use the, the carpet here. There's not enough room. No. All right, I'll go back to the town screen. There's plenty of room here. There we go. You unrolled. The carpet begins to ascend. As you reach down to get the carpet, it vanishes into thin air without even so much as a puff of smoke. It wouldn't even dignify me with a puff of smoke. Alrighty. Here you go, horsey. Here's your bridle. I know you want it. You slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Call, climb up on my back. Okay. Let's go sell him out to Lalote. Hold on. This was a little accelerating. Accelerating. And fade to white. Apparently, we've done. The disciple of the cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. You, you grip the reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. Catch me! And find yourself standing on a cloud. Neat. Alright, what I'm going to do is save here. Hang on one second here. Gonna remind people that we're still going in the uh, in the Twitter world. Be right there, just kind of plugging myself. Oops. This is important stuff. There we go. Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. Well, you're doing now, I have a destiny. Some are predestined, 
others are determined by choice. Destiny. I believe yours to be of the latter. How is it possible that I can stand upon Oh, you're head? just full of little questions, aren't you? Such are not the questions you should be asking. Oh, somebody did chastise me. You have come for the air gem, or the growth gem, as it was once named by the ancients. It has not been turned thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. Meaning no disrespect. Uh, mm. Cloud Spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown, thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The Cloud Spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. It must be proven that you have also grown in both mind and soul. So on these shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of king are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the growth gem. After a moment of silence, the cloud spirit intones... Behold your first test. I actually remember these tests being uh, a little nerve-wracking and kind of difficult, so you guys are going to help me. The mist around you clears, and you find yourself in a familiar place. This is Daventry, and furthermore, you are a child again. A sudden dizziness overwhelms you for an instant. How strange, you no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind, though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look, it is Malvolio, your best friend. Malvolio. The two of you are deeply engrossed in a game of bat and ball. Hmm, he's a pretty accurate batter. Oh, oops. Oh, I went into old man McGrady's yard. Ouch. Uh oh, that sounds like the king now. What do we do? <laughs> what? That's child. No. Oh, the king came outside himself to chastise us? Yes? Yes? Is that how you address your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir. I'm his sire. Which of you two boys threw that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? Uh oh. Uh, okay, so what are friends for? Why, well, any sensible person would do it under the circumstances. Absolute absolution. Partners in crime. The sacrificial lamb. Okay. <laughs> Let's see, um... Let's try doing this honestly. I, I would say partners in crime. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'd say it's both of our faults. Uh, let's see. Weed was says partners in crime. Any more votes? Dum -dum 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 -dum. Going once. Going twice. Sold. We both did it, your majesty. We're both at fault and deserve the same punishment. You cast a quick glance at your friend, who just nods sullenly and avoids Blame your him. I see. Well, I do not punish for such trivial occurrences, particularly unintended ones. However, I will see you play your game elsewhere. Away from here. Y yes sire Behold your second test. I think I remember that going a little bit differently when I played it. I think they well, maybe. Oh my. You feel yourself growing older, more so than before the tests began. Again, dizziness overcomes you. Your memory of the previous test fades, and in its place, your mind is filled with the knowledge of everything that has since come to pass. 
This includes, unfortunately, the dreadful misfortunes which have plagued Daventry since the coming of the terrible three-headed dragon. To make things worse, your 17-year-old daughter has been demanded as its latest sacrifice. In return, it will not harm the rest of the population until the next demand. You would go forth to destroy the dragon yourself, but you no longer have the heart for such quests. Never have you felt so forlorn, so frail. You fear that given the choice, you would do anything to rectify the situation. Anything? Well, King Graham, you've really uh, driven this kingdom into the ground. Black Cloak, I'm sure you can be A trusted. Charming view. No wonder you come here so often. 